Welcome to a healthy living video vlog at workoutmaster.com. This is Ruben. And this is Aaron. Today we're going to talk about meat and how long it takes for the meat to reach the shelves of the supermarket. That's probably because you buy your meat at a supermarket. You generally don't buy it from your farmer. Let's tear this one apart. Let's talk but about this. Even if you get it from your farmer, yeah, you never know how long it takes. Absolutely. And that's the, I guess that's the importance of finding out how fresh or how recent has the animal been, you know, slaughtered and how long it takes before it reaches your kitchen, per se. It came to my attention recently, I was in the Whole Foods Market. I don't really go there a whole lot, but I went there not as somebody asking questions, just as a regular consumer. All I wanted was to buy a piece of meat. Got talking with a manager of a meat department, and uh, some interesting conversation came up. He said that generally in the Whole Foods, uh, they get the meat after four days since it's been slaughtered. He also said that most of the supermarkets uh, get the meat within the 30 to 40 days after the meat has been, uh, basically the beef has been slaughtered and they keep it in a, a vacuum packed with the gases so that way when they open it up the meat is fresh. Now that doesn't seem right to me. No it doesn't. I, <laughs> we know for a fact. I mean I understand that there is there is a, you know aged meat and that you can pay actually a very premium price for consuming such items. Uh, but there is actually, uh, as far as we know, there is a detriment to eating aged meat because it can contain certain chemicals that will not be all that great for your body to actually be exposed to. The other thing is that we have always used, you know, that form of, of processing food for the sake of actually keeping it. In other words, so it wouldn't spoil in times when we really have the proper refrigeration, which it hasn't been, it's not that old of, of, a, of a process. I mean, it's only about a hundred and something years old that we actually have some form of industrial you know refrigeration and for the for the everyday people probably we didn't have refrigerators until the, the 40s or something like that it don't matter it's fairly recent uh, uh, science per se but the interesting thing is that you know if you're exposing yourself to all this meat you might actually be taking a couple back steps in your process of actually getting healthier and getting better and the one thing that we weren't exposed to you is that sometimes we don't know exactly how long it takes for the meat to be processed in a, in a slaughterhouse and how long it takes before it's actually sold and put to a for sale in the shelves of the supermarket. And that's something that, to me, it creates some type of a, of a, of a concern because I want to make sure that I eat, if I'm going to pay a premium price, I want to make sure that that actually is good quality meat that is actually fresh. And fresh is one of those words that just because the thing is not rotten, it's automatically assumed that it's fresh. Well, it's not the case because they can actually fake the freshness by injecting it with certain, you know, uh, gases that actually will the same thing that they do with fruits and vegetables, let's be honest, to actually preserve it. And that's something that I do not want to be exposed. And I don't know if many people are, you know, actually they are aware of it. And if they are, please let me know what's going on and why, why it's happening. I mean, I have a pretty good idea that is for the, for, you know, bottom line, it's about money, but I, I just don't want to be exposed to, to the sort of deal. Absolutely. Know? The point of it is it takes a long time for the meat to reach our shelves. We are consumers, we're the one who pays for the stuff. Uh, if we don't ask questions, we don't demand anything, the economy does not change. Uh, so if you go into your local supermarket and you keep asking questions, uh, guess what? A lot of times you're not gonna get any answers, but guess what? You still ask the questions and over a period of time, you'll see things gonna start slowly change. That's why we have a Whole Foods market that delivers somewhat fresher food. Now. Can we get fresher than that? We should. Uh, there should be no reason why we cannot get the really fresh meat in our... Yeah, and I think the conversation came about with the consumption of liver and we were debating whether, you know, I assume that liver will have to be as an organ or a gland or whatever, you know, because it's an organ, that it has to be as fresh as possible. Well, how fresh, you know, what's possible? Is it one day, two days, three days, a week or a month and a half? Well, you want to know because that meat, when it's actually aging by whatever process, it's actually not going to be that great for you. The, what occurs typically is that the glycogen in that meat and that organ is going to convert into lactic acid. That lactic acid eventually, once it's consumed and prepared, is going to turn on, onto all these polyamines, and those polyamines in your body will convert to acetone, which by no means do I want to have that my body exposed to acetone because I see what it does to my girlfriend's nails, and I see what it does to plastic, and I definitely don't want to put it inside of my body. That's true. And I know from experience, let's say if I go to Armenia or other places where you can actually put your hands on, on some really fresh meat, 
that it actually tastes delicious. It actually tastes sweet. So I'm not necessarily that sure about aged beef that should taste better. You might have more flavor, but I would rather prefer a flavor over fresh meat if I'm gonna choose to eat a fresh meat. Why do people actually, I understand that when you go to a really high-end steakhouse like Smith Wolensky. Well, they always say it's a fine aged corned beef. <laughs> well, they corn fat the beef. So they give them a lot of grains and find aged it. So that's no... It's a double no. Like no one, <laughs> no, no, no two, and a no three when you're walking out of the restaurant. Uh, because the check is like... <laughs> yeah, and then when, they, when they smack you with the check, yeah, you know... The price you... is high. So guys, be aware that the, the meat takes a long time for you to get, to buy, to purchase. It takes a long time for the supermarket to get. So just be aware of it. Look for better sources. If you don't know how to find a good sources, go to eatwild.com. You can connect with the farmers. You can support your local farmers. There's a lot of things that you can do as a consumer. It is a consumer uh, driven economy and you can make it change. That's right. For better. And uh, yes, because traditional foods one, one, uh, at one point process that way to preserve them, doesn't mean that they have to be good for us today when we have the technology to be able to deliver things fast, efficiently, and fresh. That's true. Remember guys, your future looks better already. Thank you very much for watching. Until the next time.